uh, good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. This bulletin is coming to you live from our studios here at Kokumlimle in Accra on digital address GA0993341 on Joy 99.7 FM. It's also live on Love 99.5 FM in Kumase, affiliates across the country on ABN Radio in London and around the world at myjoyonline.com. The news is brought to you by Telesol 4G, proudly Ghanaian, Telesol, Just a Touch and Mark Autopaz Ghana, distributors of Isuzu and Chevy Cars. Mark Autopaz Ghana with you for the long run. Coming up in this edition. President Ekufado was global investment leaders in London at the Financial Times Africa Summit as he touts Ghana's energy potential. The energy sector will ensure stability and adequate supply of power in place of the erratic power situation that we inherited, which we call DUSO. Ghana, as a result, is today a net exporter of electricity. We'll get a live update from our reporter there and later hear from the president's classmates as he retraced his steps to his alma mater, the Lunson College. Billy, we knew him as Billy. He was glorious at school. He was clever. Uh, he was talented, a sport. Lovely guy. Yeah, he, didn't, he wasn't pretentious. He didn't give as. We'll get to hear from them later and also National Petroleum Authority yet to receive investigative report on atomic gas explosion from fire service a year after the incident which claimed people and injured several others. As we speak, we don't have the fire service report. We made a request for it. We have followed up, but we still do not have that report. MP for Tafu Pankrono describes latest action by NPP Vigilante Group Delta Force as a conspiracy to tarnish his credibility after they disrupted a meeting he called. It, it is not him only that is part of the, uh, what I think is a complete conspiracy. A conspiracy to do what? I don't know what they're trying to uh, destroy my credibility. I don't know what it is. False accusation like I'm trying to destabilize Akufazu Galbet. We'll get to hear from him. We also have sports. And the Black Stars have assembled in Kumasi to prepare for the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations qualify against Sierra Leone despite the uncertainty. We'll be in Kumasi for live updates. And also in this package, former President Mahama describes NPP government as intolerant after headmaster of the Timpani Senior High School was suspended for allowing aspiring NDC national organizer to allegedly incite students there. Who went into schools more than somebody? <laughs> we were in government. And there was somebody who was always in the schools and doing plain political politics, plain politics. And yet we never sacked any headmaster. We'll get to hear from the deputy NDC organizer who says he only took advantage of a good opportunity to address the students. All that and more here on the Midday News with me, MFA Apau. Details shortly. And President Ekufuado has been making the case for global CEOs and world leaders to consider investing in Ghana, particularly its energy sector, which he says has huge potential. Addressing the investor community at the ongoing Financial Times Africa Summit, the president told the Gadrin Ghana had saved $7 billion following his government's termination of 11 power purchase agreement entered into by the previous government and also indicated export of 100 megawatts of electricity to neighboring Burkina Faso. Presidential correspondent Elton Brobe uh, joins us live from London. Uh, Elton, what more has the president been saying regarding this power issue? Hello, Elton. Yes, Eva. Okay, so I was asking what more President Akufado has been saying regarding the power issue. Well, according to him, uh, government has terminated some eight power purchasing agreements and that saved the country about $8 billion. And, and it's actually made the country more energy efficient and the fact that we have capacity to now export to neighboring countries. And it says that um, uh, they have an arrangement with Burkina Faso where on a daily basis Ghana is able to export 100 megawatts of power to that neighboring country. He, he said it to, to deter the investor community. The Ghana at some point in her life faced crisis in energy, but that is over enough excess power. So, so, so therefore, they should come and invest in the country. We can listen to him more after made the case before the CEO was in London. The energy sector will ensure stability and adequate supply of power in place of the erratic power situation that we inherited, which we call do so. Equally important, electricity rates have witnessed reductions up to 17.5% for domestic <coughs> consumers to bring them relief and a 30% reduction for industry 
to stimulate industrial activity. In addition, a review of 24 power purchase agreements, which has led to the termination of 11 power deals and the rescheduling of eight others, has enabled us to save the government treasury about 7 billion United States dollars in excess capacity charges over a 30-year contract period. We also issued seven and 10-year CD-denominated bonds, totaling 4.7 billion CDs, which have halved the 2.4 billion United States dollars energy debt we inherited and helped to improve the liquidity of the banks and the balance sheets of the state-owned enterprises in the energy sector. Ghana, as a result, is today a net exporter of electricity. I was in Ouagadougou, the capital of Burkina Faso, last Friday for the inauguration with the President of Faso, His Excellency Rochmash Christian Kabori of the Bongatanga, who is the capital of Ghana's Upper East Region, to Ouagadougou Power Interconnection Project which will see daily up to 100 megawatts of power supplied directly to Burkina Faso from Ghana. We're also very desirous of developing strategic industries out of our abandoned natural so you hear that, President Okufado. Now, Elton, th th we know this is an investment forum, but we understand that President also shifted from business uh, to social issues, talking about the controversial issue of the National Cathedral. What exactly did he say? So, after the formal presentation, the financial, the editor of the Financial Times, Lionel Babbitt, engaged the president on a one-on-one -on -one basis, where some of the social issues came up, the issue about the planting for food and jobs, the one district, one factory, whether it's going to end up as a white elephant. And then later, as the president about why the country will commit resources into putting up a national cathedral when there are several challenges facing the country. But president Okufuado's response was that uh, the national cathedral is a priority among other priorities. So funding will have to be sourced to ensure that it is constructed. For him, it will represent a symbol for the Christian faith in the country where we can conduct, we can, the Christian faith can uh, congregate and then, uh, you know, observe national events. You have the presidential affairs correspondent Elton Brobe uh, with the president in the UK. Now, President Okufado uh, yesterday spent some time with his former classmates at Lanson College where he had not met after finishing his A-level examination 57 years ago. Now, as presidential correspondent uh, Elton Brobe report, his colleagues say despite being the only black person in the school, he stood tall in all disciplines. Lanson College, an almost two hours drive from central London, was home to President Okufuado in his secondary school days and clearly marked the beginning of his rise to leadership positions which today put him in the high office of the country. Described as hard-working in class, skillful on the field, and jovial in the dormitory, two of his classmates, Richard and Nigel, tell me he was everything one would wish for in a friend. Billy, we knew him as Billy. Um, uh, he was talented, a sportsman. I don't think he knew music much, actually. We played in the same soccer team. Towards the end of a game against a particularly clever side, we got lots of good results. And we were leading 3-1 with about 10 minutes to go. And Billy got hold of the ball in the centre circle and started juggling with the ball. Having said, as, as he started... It's Madison time, <laughs> folks. The other team were furious. We were all applauding, and the game ended 3-1. <laughs> Lovely guy. He, didn't, he wasn't pretentious. He didn't give airs. But he was, I think, the first person. So if you went to somewhere like Brighton, along the coast there, he'd be the only one. I learned a lot from him. And, and that's a sort of racial thing. And the one thing I remember on that thing was we were talking about people sunbathing. He said to me down there on the beach there are people lying out in the sun hoping to look like me. You heard their former classmates of President Okofuado at the Lanson College. Now, let's head to the Ashanti region because we're told that the Ashanti Regional Education Directorate has interdicted two teachers for allegedly raping their students. It's an English teacher and a visual arts teacher, Douglas uh, Adade, uh, both of St. Louis Senior High School. My colleague, Ohemin Terrier, has been following this and joins us on the line. So who exactly are these teachers and uh, what, what exactly do we know? 
Thank you, MFA Douglas Adade is an English teacher at St. Louis Senior High School, whilst Matthew Asante Dako is also a visual arts student at Kumasi Girls, a teacher at Kumasi Girls Senior High School. Mr. Adade was picked up last week for allegedly uh, raping a Form 3 visual arts student uh, who later reported incident to senior house mistress of the school. In the case of uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Ad- Ad- Dako, uh, I'm told that uh, he is said to have raped the student on campus, and uh, according to school authorities, uh, he is suspected to have dragged the student uh, before uh, raping her. So after the act, the student reported the incident to a teacher who confronted uh, the uh, dark old man, but he denied the allegation. But later, the student reported the incident to uh, her parents at home, uh, who also brought in police to effect the arrest of Mr. Matthew Asante Dakon. So GS says the two teachers will face disciplinary uh, committee. Uh, before then, uh, they have inter- interdicted them uh, following the disciplinary committee's uh, meeting. My colleague there on him in Terry, of course, uh, would um, interrogate this matter further in our subsequent bulletins. But let's stay uh, in the Ashanti region because Member of Parliament for Tafu Pankronung and Minister for Evaluation and Monitoring, Dr. Anthony Akutose, has described the violent disruption of a meeting he called last Sunday by Vigilante Group Delta Force as a conspiracy to tarnish his credibility. The MP was reportedly whisked away to safety after the group disrupted the meeting, shouting and leaving supporters who had converged for the meeting to run for the safety. Listen. Now, leader of the Delta Force, uh, Jafar Saeed, popularly known as OD4, has been justifying reasons for the attack. Listen. Jafar is a 2015. In 2016, we were promised jobs and other things, but for the past two years, he has neglected us. Whenever we call him, he refuses to pick up. He is receiving huge salaries, but those who helped him recapture power have been left with nothing. This was actually the third time he was wasting the constituency after winning power. We then decided to go and meet him, but we were stopped, so we decided to disrupt the meeting. This is the first time I ever constituency. And to this means a traitor will not perform for no, and for for no perform for me in common. And to a yard you say, you don't come into nothing. Now you have a power for two men. Now you do one and a bit of a or must be a fine. I won't better the call, doctor, or any of the fact that you can change in a by a boss. That's the leader of the Delta Force, uh, Jafar Saeed. But speaking to join news, Dr. Anthony Akutose says there's a conspiracy to tarnish his credibility as he claims the leader of the Delta Force has been offered a job at the afforestation sector in the constituency, contrary uh, to lack of jobs. And it, right before we really got into the meat of the meeting, I, I heard some noise, sound of motorbike. And I saw one of them, uh, Odifo, hitting a table with a chair. So I, we moved back a bit, and then there was sort of helter skelter. So I left the area. After a few minutes, they wanted me to continue the meeting, and I said, no, I, I, I will not continue the meeting, but they can continue. I understand that uh, the guy who was leading the event, he's on the uh, list of people employed by afforestation. So if he has issues as a chairman, he should go to the uh, area coordinators, they will inform the authorities, and we'll have a meeting like we had yesterday. You, you don't come and disrupt a meeting and say that you are coming to meet with me. How do you meet with somebody by banging chairs on the table? That cannot be a meeting. That is why I'm suggesting to you that it means that it, it is not him or only that is part of the, uh, what I think is a conspiracy. A conspiracy to, to do what? I don't know what they're trying to uh, destroy my credibility. I don't know what it is, but it, it cannot be that he is not aware of what's going on. Making false accusations like I'm trying to destabilize the Kufazu government itself suggests to me that it, it, it cannot be. So you think it's somebody from your party who is behind this? I, I cannot say, but it, 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 my suspicion is that it's, it's more than one individual. 
Dr. Anthony Akutuo says the Tafu Pankrono MP. We're still working the lines to speak to the Tafu Pankrono Divisional Commander Superintendent Kwekwa Mwako. As and when we're able to raise him, we'll get the latest on this matter. But away from it, at least seven people were killed and many others injured when a gas station exploded exactly a year ago at the atomic junction here in Accra. Following the deadly explosion, the president directed immediate investigations and also came up with nine safety protocols to be followed by all gas stations. The National Petroleum Authority is now saying it is yet to receive a report from the fire service to guide its next line of action. Earlier today, my colleague Maxwell Agbagba was on the ground to speak to some survivors. For about four months, getting to six months, they were not doing any business here because this whole place was cut off. But today, uh, they are able to do business here. I have somebody who survived the explosion. He's talking about getting surgery to correct this. Um, he says his friends now actually call him gas man. He says after the incident, he spoke to a lot of media houses, but it looks like no help is coming from anywhere. Not even the National Disaster Management Organization um, has actually come in to help them. He said they came here to write their names, but they've not received any um, compensation so far. And as part of the recommendations, a proposal to introduce a cylinder recirculation model that would have been that would have seen a cylinder owners leaving their empty cylinders at the gas station and going home is yet to start a year on. But why is this so? Yes, NPA's director of inspections, Esther Anku. We are virtually done with the inspections of all these outlets. The classification is ongoing. In fact, it's reached an advanced stage. When will we be done with classifying the stations? I'm saying that we are virtually done. Then when will we begin decommissioning the high-risk stations? The decommissioning is such that, as we speak, we don't have the bottling, bottling plants up yet. We had about 18 companies expressing interest to go into that business. Where is the fire service report on the explanation, on the explosion, so that all the stakeholders can learn from it and keep ourselves safe? As we speak, we don't have the fire service report. We made a request for it. We made an official request for it. We have followed up, but we still do not have that report. The fire so, service told us that they are, they are finished and they are ready to present it to you as of last year. Well, we don't have it. You heard there, Esther Anku, is there. she's the NPS Director of Inspections. Of course, we'll get to hear uh, from the Fast Service as to what happened uh, to that report. You're still listening to the Midday News here on Joy 99.7 FM. Our top stories covered so far. President Ekofado, who is Global Investment Leaders in London at the Financial Times Africa Summit, as he touts Ghana's energy potential. We got to hear from some of his classmates as well. And then we're just hearing from the National Petroleum Authority. They are yet to receive investigative report on atomic gas explosion, but still to come for Former President Mahama describes NPP government as intolerant after headmaster of the Timpani Senior High School was suspended for allowing aspiring NDC national organizer, deputy national organizer, to allegedly incite students there. Who went into schools more than somebody? <laughs> we were in government. And there was somebody who was always in the schools and doing plain political politics, plain politics. And yet we never sacked any headmaster. We'll get to hear uh, from him. Uh, we'll get to hear from the NDC aspiring uh, organizer who says he only took advantage of a good opportunity to address the students. We're right back after the break. It was action-packed this weekend in the area of sports, and Ridwan Ibrahim Asante will give us the latest. So which one did you monitor? Okay, I did the Chelsea one. And oh, okay. Yeah, Are you a Sunday girl? Yes. Uh, yeah, okay. We were on Saturday shifts. We were on Saturday. Yeah, okay. so we watched so I, a I lot of matches. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that was good to see Chelsea <laughs> win. But there's more talk on whatever is happening in world football. And the famous interview by Jose Mourinho that there's wickedness and manhunting you know, to get him out as Manchester United manager. Mm -hmm. The players are ganging up on him. I, I, I don't know for now. <laughs> I don't know for now. <laughs> you know, but, you know, the results, you know, prove, you know, that um, he's having some difficulties in charge of Manchester United. But we have to talk national team now because um, this is the international week and the Black Stars have assembled in Kumasi to start preparations for the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations qualify against Sierra Leone in a Group H you know, game. We don't know if the match will come on and because or um, will come off because of um, a FIFA ban 
um, to Sierra Leone. Now, the country has been banned for government uh, for interference by the country's anti-corruption agency that has um, seen the president of the Sierra Leone Football um, Association and the vice um, the vice being kicked out of office. We don't know what will happen, MFA, but. It looks like the Black Stars are still leaving no stone unturned mm. and they want to get preparations underway. Let's get to Kumasi now where Dela Liatiase has joined us now. Dela, you know, what's the plan like for the team? Well, um, Ridwan, uh, I'm told that um, a chunk of the players are already here in Kumasi. Um, the rest, um, I hear John Boy and goalkeeper Atizigi, um, Atizigi will be joining um, the spokesperson for the normalization committee. That's Daniel Kokiobwa, who will be arriving maybe um, a little after midday. Uh, we are expecting that they also touch down. But if they are able to touch down, then it means that um, we have the full house. Um, there will be a press conference at the Babaira Sports Stadium at 3 p.m. Then the staff will have their first training session at 3.30 at the Babaira Small Stadium. And so that's how they are going to start um, their preparation towards this game on Friday. That is, if it, on Thursday, if even the game will come on or not. And so uh, we are just waiting to hear from the authorities what they are going to tell us at that press conference at 3 o'clock at the Babaira Small Stadium. Then we have a fair idea about how the plans will be uh, the subsequent days before the match itself on Thursday. Uh, Delali Atiasi, they're joining us from Kumasi. We understand there's a backup plan if the Australian game is um, cancelled, then they'll play against Kumasi and Santi mm. And also, um, some news coming in. You know, you know that the Black Stars had an official sponsor, which is um, Unibank. Mm -hmm. But then after the bank um, mm -hmm. was collapsed by the Bank of Ghana, alongside four other banks, we now have Consolidated Bank of Ghana taking charge. It looks like the sponsorship of the Black Stars, where we all thought was in jeopardy, is still on because there's a letter on the head, um, the letterhead of um, the CBG, that's the Consolidated Bank of Ghana, wishing the Black Stars were as official sponsor of the Black Stars. So that sponsorship is still on, and I think it's good news for that's the national team. Yes, yeah, so mm. we'll get the details. You can read the details on our online page. Um, quite wishing the team well to go ahead and win the two matches against you. That's if the games, you know, do come on. Thank you very much, Ridwan, for the latest from the world of sports. Now, former President John Dramani Mahama has described the NPP government as intolerant following the suspension of the headmaster of the Timpani Senior High School in the Upper East Region, Dominic Indegu Amulale, uh, was suspended by the Ghana Education Service last Saturday after a video went viral of an aspiring NDC national organizer, Joshua Kamba, allegedly inciting some students there against President Okufuado over the challenges facing the implementation of the free senior high school program. But Mr. Amulale says he was under aware of the incident. I was in Navrongo to discuss the challenges with my regional director when the incident happened. And even when I returned that day, I never heard of it. Nobody told me of it until the following day, Thursday, when I had a message, WhatsApp message, I actually saw what happened on campus. When I saw it, I, we, we carried out an investigation, and it was revealed that that NDC executive aspirant was passing to Wirianga to solicit votes, and then stopped over there and met with the students. Well, addressing delegates and supporters of the NDC at the WAC campus of the UDS, Mr. Mahama condemned the suspension of the headmaster and urged the committee asked to investigate the issue to overturn the suspension. And sometimes we take cheap political advantage. Me, I'm not a person who likes to take cheap political advantage. Recently, I was coming in Northern Region and students had closed from one of the community day schools and they, they were going home. And so they blocked my car on the road. I didn't go into the school. They blocked my car. And then they said, oh, Mr. President, we just wanted to thank you for our school. I said, I said, oh, great, good. I hope everything is okay. He says, no, we have problems. Then I said, oh, I'm sure government will solve them. And um, just study hard and make your parents proud. I gave a very encouraging message, and then I went on my way. The next time I see, he says, nobody should go into schools and do what I want. Who went into schools more than somebody? <laughs> We hear there, former President John Ramani Mahama. We're privileged to be joined on the phone by the aspiring NDC national organizer, Joshua Kamba. Uh, thank you very much for your time here on the Midday News. So uh, what exactly did you go to the Timpani Senior High School to do? And did you go through the laydown procedures before speaking to the students? Uh, Madam, you see, the problem is that I didn't go to the school. Like uh, as as the former president just uh, mentioned, he was in the Northern region, I was in the Upper East region. And my, myself, too, I was just driving... Um, to a road that links the school. I mean, 
you cannot miss it at all. Uh, it's not safe now to go there because I'm told that generally just moved there now and was beaten mercilessly. So it's not safe to go there. But earlier, when the thing happened, if you guys have moved there, you understand my situation. How far I was just driving, um, and then students stopped me. And then they said, come down, come and see what we're going through, come down. So I said, I came and I saw their chop boxes and all the things that you can see in that video, you know. So I got down and then I was, give us one to eat. We need money to go and eat. We are hungry. That is when they themselves started. Those who saw that I came down actually also started massing up. I have to even leave. If there was the crowd that would have been there, would have been, I have to leave. I spent like them, like them, seven minutes with them. So I just was, then they said, we are hungry. See our room. We are, this, this room, this room, we, we are packed inside like fish that they are frying. You know, we are frying inside. The place is so hot. Mm -hmm. So the good things I said, that was not captured anyway. I said, oh, the same thing, take it easy. All, all that you can do is to give an encouragement. The other ones that came, said, no, 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 tell us something. The students themselves were agitating. And we want you, when you come back, come and do something to help us. That is exactly what resulted to it. Okay, so, so a, a number that, of clarifications, that, quickly. We don't, we don't have too much time, Mr. Akamba. Let me just find out from you. So you were driving past the school. The students stopped you that they were hungry, and you gave them money, and you also addressed them. And these concerns that they raised to you did not bother to actually ask the school authorities what exactly is going on. Is that what it is? Because that's why I said that I was passing. I didn't even know there was a school there anyway. I didn't know you had You did to not know there's a Timpani Senior High School there? No, I didn't know. No, no, I didn't mm. know that that's where the school was situated. No, I didn't know. That, I was just passing. It's, it's normal. Cars just drive past there. We're not a but you did not know the school, but you knew that cars drive past there? No, somebody was leading us to do, to Pusika. Mm. Somebody was leading us to Pusika. Okay. So we're using that road to Pusika. So it's a road, it's a major road that gets to Pusika. So we're using it. So I didn't know of that. I've never used that. So, so beyond that addressing them and talking to them, I, I don't even know if you gave them money as well. What did you do no, about I the situation? Money because that was, you did I not give them money. They said they were hungry. No. So what did you do? I, I only encouraged them and told them that I'll make... There's another video that you can see. You hear me telling them that when I get to Accra, I'll speak to the school feeding for them to be taken care of properly. That's and exactly you've done that? Said. And you've done that? Uh, but I have come, I've come back to Accra and... Uh, the MPP is attacking me left and right. They send their attacks back for me left and right, attacking me. So, so what, the, what then about. do you make of the yes. suspension of the headmaster, quickly? Sad, though, and I sent a delegation to him yesterday to have a word with him and to speak to him, which they did. We're grateful uh, for your time. That's uh, Captain Joshua Akamba. He's aspiring uh, to be the NDC's national organizer. Now, in many countries around the world, some jobs are considered the preserve of men. This is because such fields, including engineering, have far long been dominated by men. But it seems some women are now challenging the status quo uh, to lead in traditionally male-dominated fields. In the latest Joy News documentary titled No Barriers, Kweko Usupepra speaks to a female engineer handling the underground mines at the mining firm Golden Star Resources. Here's an excerpt. Working in the mining industry is quite a challenging choice and requires stamina and passion to be successful. This is something Gifty knew about right at the beginning of her career. She is currently a shift boss in the mines. Gifty leads a crew of 20 men who are sunk almost a kilometer deep into the belly of the earth to mine gold. If people are working there and they are not dead, I can go and work there. So I was I wanted to see how the place is. So on my first day underground, it was an escape route, which you have to walk through a route. Just why it was very difficult. My first tax underground wasn't easy. But with that one, I was so much. When I realized we took the cage, we went, everything was normal. I was like, I was just climbing the ladders and everything was normal. But it's because I was determined to do it. Mining is recognized as being one of the most male-dominated industries in the world. A recent study from Women in Mining UK and PricewaterhouseCoopers suggested that women make up just 10% of the global mining workforce and 5% of board positions in the top 500 globally listed mining companies. The situation is not very different at the Pristia underground mines. There are only two women who work here in the core underground operations, Gifty and Ernestina.
The documentary No Barriers airs later this evening at 6.30 p.m. on the Joy News channel or Multi TV. You may want to catch it. And it's time now to check out what's trending on social media maps. Well, Accra is trending because of the rains earlier this mm. morning at one underscore king says, in Accra, when it rains, problem, uh, there's problems. When there are no rains, problems, dusty roads. And at Amegas says, parts of Accra will be really messed up after this rain. And the last tweet I'm going to take is from at Life Opress who says, this, this rain was unbearable at Accra. Mm. Anytime it rains, I'm on my knees. So there's more news when you log on to myjoyonline.com. Um, MFA Apau, have a good afternoon. It's your day off and you end up looking after the baby while your wife goes off to work. You realize you have no idea how to change a diaper. So you video call your wife. Hello, darling. Yeah, hello. Hello. Ojo, is everything all right? Everything is all right. I'm not seeing Toku. How do I change a baby's diaper, please? Oh,